Is audio videos everything is clear, all of you? Yeah. So before start the session, so let it be, let it be confirm what we're gonna be discussing for today. What is the agenda for today's session? So please be open. A class notes, let it be right now. Today, we're gonna be discussing about what is AWS. What is A W S? And by end of the session, we're going to be difference between A W S versus DevOps. <laughs> We're gonna be discussing as much. In the last session, we understood very clearly what is DevOps. In today, in the la in the last demo session, what is the DevOps? We understood very clear. But today, we're discussing what is AWS and what is the difference between AWS and DevOps. We understood very clearly for today's session. We're gonna be. Fine. So let us one thing. So some of the new students have joined for today. Let them let them get let them get benefit. So let us revise one more time last class session within 10 to 15 minutes. Let us revise one more time last session within 10 to 15 minutes. Then we'll move forwarding into the what is AWS and by end we can conclude what is the difference between AWS and DevOps today. That is an exactly our agenda for today. Yeah. Let us start with DevOps ends with what AWS for today's session. Please let us start with what? DevOps guys, please. Let us start with what? DevOps guys, please. So as we discussed in the last session, we have a three questions. So let us one more time. Let us discuss one more time the same three questions, please. What is an application? What is an exactly application? Application is nothing but what? The working software, which is written any programming like Java, .NET, Python, we call as an application. That application, we're going to be placed on server side. We're going to be placed on server side. Once if it is placed on server side, we can access our uh, internet as a website like Flipkart or Amazon, book my show. But what about SDLC? SDLC is a software development lifecycle. In SDLC, we have uh, several stages, several stages, several stages, several stages like analysis, 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 design, implementation, testing, deploy, and maintenance guest tricks. And maintenance guest please. One second now. One second. Yeah, fine. Very good. And please be kind. Thanks. Yeah. So what is an SDLC? SDLC is a 
software development life cycle in sdlc we have a several stages like analysis design implementation testing deploy and maintenance by following these are all the stages we can able to produce an application like flipkart or amazon book my show whatever may be and we can able to do business and internet like this okay by helping of sdlc we can produce a a flipkart kind of application for example if you want to produce a flipkart kind of application can able to make it in a single day no we can't make it in a single day okay how it is possible by following these are all the stages one two three four Fine. What are the first stage, guys? Please, analysis means gathering information from the client of exactly the login page, registration page, payment gateway. What are the client requirement? What is an exactly client expecting? Each and everything will be gathered based on gathering information. Our architects will be analysis. Once if it is analysis, so it will be design. Design is nothing but what the plan. According unto the plan, our developers will implement the lines of code by using Java .NET by using any programming. Once if it is an implement, whether it is working or not, our tests will be verified the functionality. Once if it is verified and if there is no error, if there is no bug, there is no issues, we can able to place on hundreds of servers which are calling as what? Deployment. What is a deployment? Placing our websites on a hundreds of servers which you are calling as what? Deployment. Once if it is deployed, we can access our internet as a website. But whether it is working or not, we're going to be monitor and maintenance. We're going to be monitor and maintenance. This entire process, this entire process, which we are calling as what? Software development lifecycle. But if you are a software engineer, directly or indirectly, you are part of this diagram. Maybe if you're a developer, can write the code. If you are a tester, can verify the functionality. Can verify the functionality but if it is a devops engineer what exactly you want to do in this devops process let us try to understand first what is a dev guys please dev is nothing but what development ops is nothing but what operation the combination of software development plus operation which we are calling as what devops which we are calling as what devops that means our roles and responsibilities start from dev environment ends with what operation ends with what operation means we are part of coding build test release deploy operation and monitor to be frankly we are not writing any coding we are not writing any test cases just we are going to be in implementing an automated devops transparent pipeline an automated devops transparent pipeline in devops an automated devops transparent pipeline which we are going to be in implementing tell me is devops is a technology like java.net python no devops is not a technology devops is a process which process which we are going to be in implementing devops is a an automated transparent pipeline from dev environment to operation while we implementing so usually the developers are keep on writing the lines of code these lines of code we we can able to we are going to be deploying onto the production environment within a shortest time with the high quality with low cost is nothing but what our devops process our devops process but as a devops engineer as a devops engineer we're going to be replacing with what a complex pipeline with what a transparent pipeline We're going to be replacing with what? Complex pipeline with what? A transparent pipeline.
Got it. But what is a complex pipeline? What is a transparent pipeline? Let us try to understand. Let us try to understand. So this is an exactly our complex pipeline, guys, please. This is an exactly our complex pipeline. Why we are calling SDLC as a complex pipeline? Because of it is a manual process from analysis to design, design to implementation, implementation testing, testing to deploy, deploy to maintenance. It is a, a manual process. Due to this manual process, if we got an issue, any problem, for identification, it will take a long time. For resolving issues, also, it will take a long time. That means what exactly? Cost will be increased, quality will be decreased. But what we're expecting is, please, we're going to be replacing with what? A complex pipeline with what? Our DevOps transparent pipeline. Our DevOps transparent pipeline, yes, please. In this DevOps transparent pipeline, Everything will be an automated. Everything is a transparent. Due to this transparent, due to this an automation, even though if you got an issue, an issue, any problem, easily we can able to identify, easily we can able to rectify as soon as possible and we're going to be deliver. If we can able to deliver as soon as possible without any problem, definitely cost is reduced, quality will be increased. So that is the reason we are going to be replacing replacing a complex pipeline with what? A transparent pipeline. But actual DevOps transparent pipeline is look like this only. In this DevOps transparent pipeline, we have a plan, coding, integration, testing, release, deploy, and operations. And operation to be frankly our roles and responsibilities start from dev environment and with what operation so so oh, so that means what that means what we are part of coding integration testing release deploy operation so we are not doing any planning we are not writing any coding we are not writing any test cases just we are going to be in implementing an automated devops transparent pipeline from dev environment to operations this is in exactly our devops process but for implementing this devops process which we are going to be in implementing devops tools are. which tools we going to be using git we are going to be using Maven we are going to be using. Jenkins we are going to be. JFrog we are going to be. SonarCube we are going to be. Ansible. Chef. Amazon Web Services. Docker. Kubernetes. Vagrant. Negios. And Elk, Elastic, Lockstack, Skibana, and Terraform. By helping of okay. these are all the tools. By helping of these are all the tools, we are going to be in implementing an automated DevOps transparent pipeline. An automated DevOps transparent pipeline. How exactly? Let us try to understand one by one guys please so by helping of git git is a version control all our developer lines of code we can able to maintain in a git version control so after maintain the lines of code we can execute by helping of maven maven is a build tool maven is a Build tool. Maven is a build tool. Either on Git, Maven, we can able to implement an automated process by helping of Jenkins. Jenkins is a CI automation tool. Okay, all developer lines of code the n number of developer lines of code continuously integrate. 
and we're going to be an execute test cases and we're going to be making working software and we're going to be delivering into the release. Delivering into the release. Release is nothing but what? Release is nothing but what? JF. So by helping of we can able to not automate the entire CI CD continuous integration, making working software and continuous delivery. The release is nothing but what? J frog. The release is nothing but what? J frog. And we are gonna be using sonar cube. Sonar cube is a code analyzer. Sonar cube is a code analyzer by helping of Git, Maven, Jenkins, JFR, Sonar cube. We are uh, going to be in implementing our CICD, continuous integration, continuous delivery. We're going to be implement. Once if it is delivering into the release, from release, we're going to be deploying our applications on hundreds of services, which you're calling as what? Deployment. Which you're calling as what? Deployment. How exactly we can able to handle this by helping of configuration management. By helping of configuration management. By helping of configuration management. By helping of configuration management what is an exactly configuration management so replacing with what a manual process with an automated process on a hundreds of service which you are calling as what configuration management but which tool we're going to be learning for this ansible ansible is a configuration management tool it is supporting cm configuration but so for handling and we're going to be learning Chuff also. So Ansible is a push model. Chuff is a pull model. So for ans uh, for configuration management, we're going to be learning one Ansible and one Chuff tool we're going to be learning. Um, but this, these hundreds of servers from where exactly we can able to get it by helping of AWS. Either we can get physically virtual environment or from cloud environment, which you cloud AWS. By using AWS Cloud, we can able to get hundreds of servers. Those hundreds of servers, we can able to automate by helping of Ansible and Chef. Got it very clear. Not only placing our websites, not only placing our websites on, not only placing our websites on AWS servers, we can able to place on Docker containers also. Sir, what is a Docker container? Docker container is an isolated area which you can place our websites, our websites very easily with low cost, with high performance. With high performance, guys, please, all of you. But this Docker containers, this Docker containers, we can able to manage, we can able to manage, we can able to manage our control with Kubernetes. Got it? And we're going to be learning Vagrant. Vagrant is a virtual provisioning tool. Vagrant is a virtual provisioning tool. By helping of Vagrant. By helping of Vagrant. By helping of Vagrant. We can able to create virtual machines very easily in your laptop. And Negios, we're going to be learning. Negios system monitoring. Elk. Elk means what? Log stacks. Elstick, log stacks, and Kibana. By helping of these three tools, we can able to do application monitoring. How exactly it is the performance for each and every action internally generating a logs. Those logs only monitor and it will be generated, generated reports analytics like this. And we're going to be learning Terraform. Terraform is a cross cloud platform. By helping of Terraform, we can able to implement, we can able to create infrastructure in any cloud, either AWS, Azure, Google. By helping of these are all the tools, by helping of these are all the tools, we can able to implement an automated DevOps transparent pipeline from dev environment to operations.
it's okay fine i understood very clearly what is the devops very good but the question is here is exactly while implementing this devops process we required a infrastructure we required a infrastructure so before infrastructure please let me know what is an application anybody as we discussed in the beginning of the class application is nothing but what a website like flipkart or amazon book my show but question is for maintaining this website for maintaining this website for maintaining this application what kind of infrastructure is required that is the question okay let it be right down so majorly servers are required networks are required database is required storage is required and so on and so on guys please And so one guess, please. All of you. Clear all of you, please. I hope you people are understand very clearly. For maintaining our application, for deploying our application, we required infrastructure. But the question is, how many ways to get infrastructure? How many ways we can able to get infrastructure? We can able to get this infrastructure either from physical environment, virtual environment, or from cloud environment. But the question is, what is cloud computing? What is a cloud? What is a cloud computing? Okay, I'll repeat very clearly for maintaining our application, for deploying our websites, we require this infrastructure. This infrastructure either from physical environment, virtual environment, or from cloud. But what is the cloud computing? Before understanding what is the cloud computing, we should understand what is a data center. What is the data center? The use a computing power, the use a computing power, keeping in a rack wise in a big room we are calling as a data center these data centers are located in a different geographical location in case please. like in india like in singapore like in uk so the aws is infrastructure is expanded in a reason wide in each and every reason each and every each and every reason each and every reason it's maintaining AWS data centers look like this only. If we can access, if we can access resources like server network storage from these data centers, our internet from a laptop is nothing but what? Cloud computing. What is a cloud computing? Repeat one more time. So these data centers are located in remote location from these data centers from this remote place data center, if we can access resources such as servers, network, storage, databases, and whatever may be required, if we can access our internet, yeah. if we can able to access our internet from your laptop is nothing but what? Cloud computing. Is nothing but what? Cloud computing is nothing but what? Cloud computing. I'll repeat one more time. Listen very carefully. The remote placed resources such as servers, 
network storage databases if we can access over internet from a laptop in a virtual form is nothing but what cloud compute but in any cloud either any cloud either aws google any cloud is a rental based infrastructure only by using cloud we are not buying anything we're going to be getting only a rental based infrastructure for deploying our application for maintaining our websites i'll repeat one more time for maintaining for deploying we require this infrastructure this infrastructure we can able to get it from cloud as a rental based we are not buying anything we going to be getting a rental based based on uses we going to be pay rent for every month just like a, a rental car for example so if you want to reach railway station if you want to go to railway station from your home to your railway station so instead of uh, instead of buying a car we are going to be booking a, a rental car why because it is very easy to get it and whatever the tariff we can pay it and that's it so no need to buy any new car understood very clearly please let me know so instead of uh, you know while you go to the railway station are you are you buying a new car or rental car which is easy for you instantly buying a car is very difficult and the rental car is very easy get the car within 10 minutes reaching a railway station whatever the tariff you can pay the same way for deploying our application or maintaining our website what kind of infrastructure we required easily we can able to get it from cloud and based on uses we going to be pay rent like a rental like a wala or car but any cloud is a rental base either azure aws or google but which cloud we going to be learning guys please amazon web services a ws we going to be learning guys please in aws and that to aws is the first cloud provider guys please in the world the first cloud provider in the world the first cloud provider in the world guys please in aws totally we have a four models which we are going to be discussing vpc we going to be discussing ec2 we going to be discussing rds we going to be discussing and s3 also we going to be discussing guys please vpc and ec2 and rds and s3 which we are going to be which we are going to be learning each and every module we going to be spending more than two weeks of time okay under vpc this is so many services and ec2 so many services and rds so many services we going to be discussing as please first what is a vpc vpc is nothing but a network please keep in your mind vpc is equal to network ec2 is nothing but what servers rds is nothing but what database s3 is nothing but what storage repeat one more time what are the vpc network ec2 servers rds database s3 storage please keep in mind keep, keep let me write down so server is equal to ec2 network is equal to vpc database is equal to rds s3 is nothing but what storage so what kind of infrastructure we require for deploying our applications or websites we can able to get it from cloud very easily on top of this cloud we can able to an implement an automated devops process but first let us try to understand what is a vpc what is ec2 what is rds what is s3 let us try to understand one by one first let us start with what vpc vpc is nothing but what network vpc is nothing but what network and vpc is nothing but what network so a office kind of network the office kind of a physical office kind of if you go for any office the internet cables are connected with laptops am i right the same kind of network 
we can able to get it over internet in a virtual form is nothing but what vpc okay in aws in aws anybody can able to get it. you and me anybody can able to getting into the aws once if it is getting into the aws okay we can able to create our private section this is your private section this is my private section this is my friend's private section okay here is we can able to create our resources these resources can able to access by yourself not by anybody for example gmail anybody can able to getting into the gmail that means what i can able to read my emails can able to read your emails? No, I can't be, you know, right? Same way, anybody can getting into the AWS. That means what? They can able to create, they can able to create a private section, means network. On top of it, exactly create the resources. These resources can able to access by them only, not by anybody. It is completely secure. And so after successfully creating a network, on top of this, we're going to be creating a server. Server is nothing but what? EC2. What is EC2? Elastic Compute Cloud. Elastic Compute Cloud. Elastic Compute Cloud. What is in exactly EC2? Elastic Compute Cloud. A, a computing power, if we can able to access over internet, in a elastic form is nothing but what? EC2 means, so one E, to sys that's what we calling as what ec2 by helping of ec2 we can able to get a server so which are all the components available in a laptop which are all the components available in a laptop the same components which we are gonna be using in our server also but the naming convention different okay so but this your laptop is just for home purpose but server is for deploying our websites Deploying our website, guys, please. Is it very clear, all of you, please? Okay. Let us try to understand. Let us try to understand with an example. Let us try to understand with an example. With an example. For example, I want to place a Netflix kind of application. I want to deploy a Netflix kind of application how is it possible guys please how exactly we can first we need to create a network we need to create a network on top of it exactly i'm going to be creating a server on top of the server we're going to be placing a netflix kind of application after placing we can access our internet how you are accessing from a laptop but it's okay but the question is how exactly we can able to maintain your customer information, login information, where exactly you can able to maintain, where exactly you can able to maintain in a database, relational database services, RDS. By helping of RDS, we can able to get databases like MySQL, Oracle can. system but by using netflix what exactly we can able to do browsing internet got it browsing browsing videos web series or uh, hollywood movies whatever may be if it is go for any blu-ray printed hollywood maybe it is around maybe more than 6 GB or 3 GB or 5. Can able to inserting into the database? It really possible? No. We can't able to inserting into the table, but that's what we're going to be using external storage. There's nothing but what? Simple storage services. Simple storage service. Yes, triple S. Yes, yes, yes. That's what is S3. By helping of S3, by helping of S3, we can able to upload. We can able to upload. we can able to upload we can able to download any kind of file any kind of file to our internet to our internet guys please it is just like a google drive how you can handle this google drive same way we can able to handle our s3 bucket also 
The best example for S3 bucket is itself, this PPT presentation. This PPT presentation from Google Drive, not from a laptop. Got it? Just like a, a Google Drive. It is an online bucket, it is an online storage. So for deploying our website, what kind of infrastructure we require? This infrastructure, we can able to get it from cloud. So on top of this, on top of this AWS infrastructure, we are going to be in implementing an automated DevOps transparent pipeline. Got it? I'll repeat one more time. By helping of AWS, we can able to get a infrastructure. On top of this infrastructure, we can able to implement an automated DevOps transparent pipeline. Got it. While we delivering working software from dev environment to operation. So internally, we are using AWS infrastructure only. But so we're going to be delivering working software within a shortest time with high quality, with low cost, low failure. It is nothing but what DevOps. While implementing this DevOps process, which we are going to be using AWS infrastructure. Got it. AWS is a infrastructure provider as a rental based. But DevOps is a, an automated process which we're going to be a smooth and, and delivering working software within a shortest time with high quality, with low cost from dev environment to production environment. This is an exactly our class. Before taking, so we understood for today, what is AWS we understood? What is a DevOps we understood? What are the comparison also we understood? Before taking your questions for today's session, okay, then, so tomorrow, so what we are understand by today's session that will be do practically by tomorrow. Tomorrow also we have a class. Same time. Same time. We have a class. Tomorrow is a holiday, but still, still we have is the demonstrations. That's why tomorrow we have a class where there is no cancellation. Tomorrow also we have a class. We'll meet on tomorrow. What we have experienced that will be practically I'll implement. I will be showing you in front of. We should understand how to getting into the AWS, how to get, how to create a service, will experience by tomorrow's session. Okay, fine. So before taking your questions, okay. So let us revise one more time our course for you. So total duration is five months. Complete DevOps, complete administration, AWS administration will be covered. Linux basics, shell script will be covered. No programming, Java.NET is not required. You record a laptop with this configuration. So freshers can join in this course. Experienced students can join in this course. Any graduate can also join in this course. Daily class recording videos after the payment, you will receive via Google Drive. From date of registration, you're going to be accessing up to 11 months. You're going to be accessing up to 11 months, guys, please. Resume preparation. Enter the question and answers four live real-time projects and 80% of soft materials I'm going to be providing with you. Our course starts with very basic level, finish with what advanced level. And each and every class is a practical implemented in front of you that you need to practice. That will start it by from tomorrow. So that means what? Daily one hour class that you need to practice. It will take minimum two hours and totally you need to commit yourself total one hour class plus two hours practice totally three hours. You need to promise yourself before joining in this course. Daily one hour class 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The classes are Monday to Saturday. There is no class on Sunday. Sunday is a holiday. You're going to be paying 12,000 rupees for complete DevOps, complete AWS for daily recordings. So this is our admin number. Please call the admin 9297-9297-77. You can WhatsApp first and recommend WhatsApp, whatever the query, first WhatsApp, then call. Okay. This is our course content link. If you copy paste, you can able to see our course content. You can find my course content. What I'm going to be cover DevOps in AWS, please be revised once. I'm going to be share this information in the chat box. Please be double click. You can able to get it. Got it. Very clear, Lala. So tomorrow we're going to be start our regular class. Okay. So who are interested, please be registered. Please be do the payment and we'll be continue by tomorrow. Got it very clearly.
clip understood very clear all of you tomorrow is a regular class tomorrow regular class only okay please got it very clearly yes yeah swati yeah so any questions please all of you S3 will be covered, EC2 will be covered in this course. That's what S3 we're going to be discussing two weeks end. EC2 will discuss two weeks end. Okay, total AWS which we are going to be discussing two months total is Swati. Is, is there any other questions, please? Is there are so many instances, why only two? No, so many instances will do that. Don't worry. Not only two only. So many. Okay. So many things we'll discuss. Fine. Not only two, two many. So many. Fine. So is there any other questions, please, all of you? Yeah. Shall we continue with tomorrow? Tomorrow also we have a class. Tomorrow also we have a class. We'll start regular class. Thanks.